Good afternoon to our global audience. We are very pleased to present to you the 2021 edition of the WIPOS Global Innovation Index. Let me start by saying a few words about the GII and the context in which we publish this year's edition. Innovation has always been uh, the key force propelling economic growth. As we learn over the past two years, innovation is even more central to our daily life. It had been at the forefront in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic. The appreciation of the important contribution that innovation makes to humanity has probably never been higher. However, innovation does not happen by itself. It emerged out of an ecosystem that encouraged human ingenuity and takes new ideas to the marketplace. This is where the GII comes in. Over the past 14 years, the GII has been assisting policymakers in evaluating their innovation performance and making innovation policy decisions. What is in this year GII report? As always, you will find the innovation performance ranking of the world's economy. At the same time, we also innovate this year and introduce a new element to our report, the Global Innovation Tracker. This new segment of the GII provides a perspective on global innovation performance, relying on a number of key indicators. For WIPO, the GII has become a prominent part of our dialogue with member states. Our GII work is now housed within the WIPO's newly created IP and innovation ecosystem sector. It certainly contributes to the sector efforts to promote broadband innovation systems that drive economic growth. With this introduction, let us turn to the main result of this year's GII edition. What is the state of global innovation? Has the pandemic slowed or accelerated investments in innovation? We introduced a new element to this year's GI, the Global Innovation Tracker, which offers a perspective on these questions. The first question the tracker explores is how the pandemic has affected investments in research and development. Just before the pandemic, R&D investments reached an all-time high growing at an exceptionally high rate of 8.5% in 2019. By comparison, global GDP grew by only 2.4% that year. Historically, R&D investments have moved in parallel with economic output. In particular, they slowed substantially during the economic downturns of the early 2000s and the late 2000s. We don't yet have full data for 2020. If the pandemic's impact really were to mirror historical experience, R&D investments in 2020 would have been hard hit, possibly declining by as much as 3%. However, there are reasons to be optimistic that R&D investments will have turned out to be more resilient over the course of the pandemic. First, the impact of the crisis has been highly uneven across industries, with technology-intensive companies continuing to do well. Second, the limited available R&D data points for 2020 do not suggest pronounced declines. Government budget allocations for the top R&D spending economies that have already been published suggests that R&D budgets continued to grow in 2020. We could also collect some preliminary information on R&D performance from companies' financial statements and interesting patterns emerge across sectors. In the pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry, around 62% of companies reported an increase in their R&D spending. This share rises to 65% for the ICT hardware and electrical equipment industry and to 80% for software and ICT services. The industries with a majority of companies reporting R&D investment declines include the car, 
as well as the travel, leisure, and personal goods industries. Interesting sectoral differences also emerge when we look at international patent filings via WIPO. The most dynamic technology fields in 2020 were medical technology, pharmaceuticals, and biotechnology. This contrasts with previous years when digital communications, computer technology, and audiovisual technology were the fastest growing fields. Another important question is how the pandemic has affected the financing of innovation. We found that the number of venture capital deals grew by 5.8% in 2020, higher than the 10-year average growth rate of 3.6%. This growth in many ways is remarkable, especially considering that venture capital deals declined in Europe and North America in the second quarter of 2020 when overall financial market uncertainty was extremely high. Strong growth in the Asia-Pacific region more than compensated for this decline. And first quarter figures for 2021 actually suggest even more vibrant venture capital activity this year. The global innovation tracker also tries to capture the pace of technological progress. Technological progress usually occurs gradually over a number of years. The development of the COVID-19 vaccines has defied this pattern. They were developed, clinically tested, and manufactured at unprecedented speed. Beyond medical innovation, we also looked at data on digital technologies and renewable energy. We show that progress continues to be strong in these technology fields with promising potential to raise living standards, improve human health, and protect the environment. I invite you to have a closer look at the GRI's Global Innovation Tracker, which presents additional perspectives on the latest global innovation trends. It is time to move now to the GII 2021 rankings. Without surprises, Switzerland, Sweden, and the United States are the world's most innovative economies leading the 2021 rankings. Together with the United Kingdom, these four economies have all ranked among the top five in the past three years. Five Asian economies feature among the top 15, the Republic of Korea, Singapore, China, Japan, and Hong Kong, China. The Republic of Korea joins the top five of the GII for the first time in 2021. Nonetheless, the majority of the GII top 25 most innovative economies continue to be from Europe. China remains at the top of the upper middle income group. Vietnam continues to lead the lower middle income group. India moves further ahead by two spots and takes second place in the lower middle income group. And Rwanda, regains the first position in the low income group. China remains the, the only middle income economy among the top 30. Few other middle income economies have managed to catch up in innovation. Turkey, Thailand, Vietnam, the Russian Federation, India, Ukraine, and Montenegro make it to the top 50 this year. The TWIPS economies alone, that is Turkey, Vietnam, India and the Philippines are systematically catching up. Vietnam has moved from the top 60 to the top 50 in the past 10 years. India and Turkey from the top 70 to the top 50. And the Philippines from the top 100 to the top 60. Beyond China that has moved up from the top 30 to the top 15 in the past 10 years, these four large economies together have the potential to change the global innovation landscape for good. For several years, the GII has demonstrated the positive relationship between innovation and economic development. The more developed an economy is, the more it innovates, and vice versa. However, some economies break out of this pattern. Some perform above or below expectations relative to their um, predicted performance and level of development. In the GII 2021, 19 economies are performing above expectations. India. Kenya, the Republic of Moldova, and Vietnam hold the record for overperforming on innovation for the 11th year in a row. Brazil, 
the Islamic Republic of, of Iran and Peru overperforming 2021 for the first time ever. Sub-Saharan Africa is the region with the largest number of overperforming economies. Top performing economies in Northern America and Europe continue to lead in the rankings. The innovation performance of economies from Southeast Asia, East Asia, and Oceania has been the most dynamic in the past decade. It is the only region closing the gap with the innovation leaders. Northern Africa and Western Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean, Central and Southern Asia, and Sub-Saharan sub Africa have followed in that order. In Northern Africa and Western Asia, Israel continues to lead the region, followed by the United Arab Emirates and Turkey. In Latin America and the Caribbean, only Chile, Mexico, Costa Rica, and Brazil rank among the top 60. In Sub-Saharan Africa, only Mauritius and South Africa rank in the top 65. And only Kenya and the United Republic of Tanzania have remained firmly in the top 100 and improved their performance over time. Finally, the GII identifies the top 100 science and technology clusters, which are located in 26 economies. The US continues to host the highest number of clusters, followed by China, Germany, and Japan. Tokyo Yokohama is the top performing science and technology cluster once again, followed by Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Guangzhou, Beijing, Seoul, and San Jose, San Francisco. Clusters in China recorded the largest increases in measured science and technology output. Brazil, China, China India, the Islamic Republic of the Iran, Turkey, and the Russian Federation are the only six middle income economies hosting top science and technology clusters. The clusters of Delhi, Mumbai, and Istanbul advanced strongly this year. To conclude, it is clear that the pandemic has left its mark on the global innovation economy. As we look forward, the exit of the current crisis in innovation will play a key role in building back better. The GI will continue to help guide policymakers and other stakeholders in this journey. I want to thank my co-presenter, Kasten and Lorena. The GI is the product of collaboration across the organization. In particular, I would like to thank the GII team working under the supervision of our chief economist for its hard work on the GII every year. Thank you for your attention.